Welcome to the Effortless Abundance Masterclass. I wanna invite you to hang out here with me for the next three days. I know that day one is fun, it's, it's exciting. I've made you some great promises in terms of your transformation. And I'm here to tell you if you show up every day, if you listen to this and listen to it not while you're doing a million other things, if you listen to it and you allow yourself to absorb in all the information I'm gonna tell you today, you are going to embrace your abundance effortlessly, your birthright as abundance effortlessly. You're gonna see abundance in a different light in a way that allows you to feel calm and peaceful and joy and reassured that no matter what, you're taken care of, okay? Because that's, that's the truth and that's exactly the promise that was made to us when we came here, all right? And so I want you guys to allow yourselves to fully submerse in this content. And I want you to show up for yourself, whatever that looks like for you. My intention is that you submerse yourself, whether that be listening to me, whether it be taking notes, whether it be listening to this a couple of times, and also doing the anchoring and journaling prompts, I want you to give yourself exactly what you need. My intention here is I wanna encourage you to get little nuggets of tangible information that you can understand to begin seeing things in a different light, in a different way for you to incorporate into your life. Because you are already abundant whether you see yourself or not, but what I'm gonna talk to you about is inviting you to see abundance in a different light and embracing it in a different way to bring more abundance into your life. Because just simple law of attraction 101, when we can be in gratitude, we attract like things. So when we're in gratitude, when we're thankful for what we have, when we see ourselves as abundant in our lives, we attract more abundance, which that's the point. So we're gonna talk about that today as well as throughout this class. And I wanna invite you to give yourself exactly what you need to allow this information to sink in. I have made it quick and concise in all the details I'm gonna give you and all the information and I trust and I know you're gonna get exactly everything you need by listening to me. And I also wanna make a promise to you that I don't speak in a lot of fluff, I give it to you straight. And that's something that works really well for me and for my clients. And I know who I'm speaking to are busy women and busy moms and your time is precious. And so hear me say, it's an incredible honor to have you joining me today. And I'm here to honor your time and give you exactly what you need and, and then allow you to anchor in, allow it to sink in to your frequency, and then you go on without your day, okay? So just know that my intention for this class is for you to get absolutely everything you need as it relates to abundance, okay? A very, give you a different perspective in how you see abundance to start feeling and attracting more abundance in your life. And then as we finish up each day, I'm gonna send you those journal prompts. And then on day three, I have something really exciting I'm gonna um, share with you, which you have access to for just going through this master class, a really incredible sacred new space for me that I've been working on for a while and you get it first. All of you that are joining me inside this effortless abundance master class on my brand new Instagram, effortlessly Jess. Of course, this is on brand and on point. I believe that you can live your best in life incredibly effortless, effortless in abundance, effortless in wealth, effortless in love, in joy, in pleasure, in fun, in luxury, in desire, and all of these things. And so if you're just watching me for the first time, let me introduce myself. My name is Jessica Doman, and I am a manifesting coach. And so what this means is I help moms everywhere, women and moms everywhere, manifest their deepest desires into their reality using real science and logic from the laws of the universe, quantum physics, all of that and playing into our natural superpowers that we have as women and as moms in our intuition, which allow us to manifest incredible things. I have personally, my personal story is um, I fell upon personal growth and manifestation roughly almost four years ago now when I was in a deep bout of struggle with infertility and um, had had a miscarriage and was having a really hard time getting pregnant with my second child. And if you've ever struggled in that, you know the absolute heartbreak um, that there can be with miscarriages and infertility. Oh my goodness. And within that, I found personal growth. 
I found the laws of the universe. I found a different way to see things. I found a new love for life. I found myself again. I think oftentimes when you are in a struggle like that and or even when you're overworked, you're in a job you don't like, you're in a marriage that feels like two ships passing in the night that you know your friends instead of like in a passionate marriage when you are going through infertility all of these things this was me i wasn't that i wasn't my best self i wasn't the nicest i wasn't the most fun to be around i wasn't me and i think in society as a whole when we're surrounded with all of these things and we as ourselves aren't truly happy in us we attract those types of things, right? That's law of attraction. When I was mean, when I was angry, all of the things, when I wasn't in my power, it was really hard to connect with my husband. When I was, you know, crying about not being able to get pregnant, what was I thinking about? All of the terrible things like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my body? What's wrong with me, right? So I'm attracting all of these things. When I found personal development over the past four years, I've really dove in and invested over a hundred thousand dollars in learning about this in attending incredible seminars and get diving deep into meditation and working with coaches one-on-one -on -one, and working with coaches in and group settings and working in masterminds and coaching other incredible women and launching my own offers and programs to bring this incredible information to incredible moms to incredible women offering this and because it's something that we're not taught in school. It's something that we aren't aware of. It's something that is literally life-changing when you can apply the principles that I teach in my offers and that I coach incredible women and moms through, you can change your life. And that's exactly what I've done from, you know, somebody who wasn't happy with her life, who was unfulfilled in her marriage, who couldn't get pregnant, who, you know, um, wasn't sure exactly where I wanted to go in my life. And I was thinking, is this really it? I've done all the things. I've checked off all the boxes. I have a degree. I have a great six figure corporate job. I have an incredible child. I have a man that loves me. I have a home. We take a couple vacations a year. I have all of the things in the box. I'm checking all the boxes, but inside me, I was missing this, this passion, this love, this excitement, this energy. That's me. This, my friends call me the little firecracker that's within me. Who is like on it, who loves life, who wants to sit, who, who is the yes girl, who is up for anything, who says what she means and means what she feels and feels her feelings and this incredible woman that I've grown into, that I've always been, I just buried her deep between all of these other stories that I had, that I had made up for myself, and all of these beliefs that I had, and all of these thoughts that I had that weren't necessarily true, and all of these societal patterns that I was falling under, and all of these, all of this like generational things I was taught and have been passed on in my lineage that like, you can't do things this way. You know, you can't ask for help as a mom. You can't, you know, you have to go to the grocery store. How dare you get your groceries delivered? All of these things I was making up, um, I had made up in my life and it had left me feeling like, what am I doing here? Right. And now through this four year journey, it took me about, I would say a good six months and I started to realize and I started working with a coach, which is why I'm such a big proponent of coaches. I really turned my life around in terms of getting clear on what I desired. What did I want my life to look like? I want to be so freaking happy every single day. Not all day, every day, but all, every day I want to be happy. I want to be so excited about life. I want to be so fulfilled in my work. I want to have incredible wealth. I want to be able to pick my kid up every day after school if I desire to. I want to be able to treat myself to luxury beyond my wildest dreams. I want to work with moms and women and to teach them that their desires are important to them on the next level, whatever that means for them. I want, to sh I want to teach women how to show up in their power, that their feelings are the way. I want to teach women how to dig into their intuition. I, I want women to feel what I feel coming from where I was and when I, had, when I didn't feel this way, when I felt shut down, when I didn't feel connected, when I had no passion. I want women to feel 
on freaking fire, doing what they love, being covered in luxury, being covered in their power, their wants, their desires, identifying their wants and desires, and then helping them manifest it into their current reality. And then I want these women I work with and these moms I work with to teach their children because this stuff isn't taught in school, taught in school, how to use your power, how to use your intuition, how to manifest. And when, when we learn this, you guys, when we learn and accept that we create our own reality, as hard as that may be to understand and accept right now, if your reality is not what you want it to be, when we learn this, and we see it happening in our world, the results we actually want, and we teach that to our children, the next generation, that's how we change the world. And I'm here for that. That's how we put wealth on a whole new level. That's how we raise the consciousness of the planet to eradicate incredible diseases and incredible poverty and all of those things. When we raise the consciousness of the planet and we use these tools that I have been empowered and equipped with, and I'm so incredibly honored to, to have this gift, to have this passion for this to be my medicine and share it with the world. So that's me <laughs> after that long introduction. I wanna jump in though and I wanna talk about um, day one of effortless abundance. What does it mean for you when you hear the word abundance? A lot of people um, when I'm coaching them will say it makes, it. Abundance to me feels like something that's out of reach, something that's too big. And here's what I want you to hear me say is abundance is your birthright. In fact, you were born to be abundant AF. You were born to have anything and everything you want. This is why as children, my children are a great example of this. When at Christmas time, they, you give them a magazine and you ask them what they want and they will circle everything in it, right? They have no filter. They have no stories to say like, I don't need all that stuff. They have no filters to, to say or to think, well, if I have these 200 toys in the catalog, then the little boy down the street won't be able to have those because I have them, right? Oftentimes when we think about having abundance, we think it's by us having and living an abundant life, it's taking away another piece of the pie and that's not how it works. Abundance is having anything and everything you want in any and every area of your life, in your health, in your wealth, in your marriage, in your job, in your travel, in your, that's abundance, whatever. And everyone's definition of abundance is different. And so I wanna encourage you guys to play around with what is your definition of abundance? Like if you could have as much of the things as, as you want, whatever those things are, what would that feel like? How would you walk? How would you talk? Um, how would you operate, right? I love to play this game. This morning in full transparency, it was not my best morning in getting my oldest off to school. I got up late, I was a little thrown off in the routine. And the whiny voice started about a snack before breakfast and we don't have snacks before breakfast. And I was just finishing my meditation and he came in to interrupt me. And I just was not, was not my higher self, was not my best self in that moment. And I raised my voice and said, no, we're not having a snack. You know this, I'll, I'll save you the reason the voice part. But essentially that's what I said. And you know, then there was some more whining and I snapped like this and said to, and thought to myself, okay, when I am this, the things that I want, right? Do I act like this? Do I snap it? Do I snap it? Do I snap it, Tyler? Do I get short tempered? Do I allow this whininess to affect me and my frequency? I literally ask myself these things, you guys. And the answer is Usually no, sometimes it's yes. And then I allow myself to have that human experience. But most of the time, like this morning, I'm like, no, I wouldn't act like this. If I was the, you know, the highest version of myself, the most abundant version of myself, no. I would get on his level and I would say to him, Ty, I know you're tired. I know you're hungry and I'm making you breakfast right now, okay? So can you sit here on the counter with mommy? Let's have a drink, tell me about your day or let's play a game while I'm cooking breakfast or something like that. So that's exactly what I did. Instead of the old version being like, yep, I don't hear whiny voices, go to your room. Because what that does is that kills my highest frequency, my highest, my most abundant self. It allows me to also feel like, 
crap, okay? Because I yelled at my kid and then the mom guilt creeps in and all of that. And so this is a game that I will invite you to play as you're exploring your abundance and what it feels like for you is when you can feel that you're not your most abundant self, can you ask yourself, if I was my most abundant self and I had X, Y, Z, in terms of abundance, if I had, if I was the most healthy person, if I had a million dollars in the bank, if I had a marriage that was filled with trust, truth, love, and passion, would I speak to my spouse this way? All of those things, ask yourself that. And and if the answer is no, okay, how would you? And then say, how would I act to my child if they were whiny and I was living the highest version of myself? And then show up as that person. Show up as that person. Act like that person in your abundance. Because here's the truth. Abundance is your birthright, okay? And I want you to feel that and say that. Abundance is my birthright. I'm so abundant. I am limitless. Because that's how you were created. Just how our children think they can have anything and everything they want. Because they can, you guys. My youngest just asked me if he could have chips for a snack for breakfast. I'm like, no. That's what he wants, right? So when we're in our purest form, like children, we are born abundant in everything. That's why your kids think they can have anything and everything when you take them to the store, right? And we get annoyed and we put these stories on them that say, no, you can't have that. No sugar before breakfast, all of these things. And really those are fine if those are our rules and our beliefs, but they are just simply our rules and our beliefs, right? They can be changed at any time. So if we can go back and see ourselves as those little children who know that we can have anything and everything we want, and we don't allow ourselves to place our, to, to be in those stories of, well, I can't have what I want because that costs too much. Or by me having more abundance in my life than, you know, Sally down the street won't have as much. That's not how it works because you are born, because you woke up today, because you are breathing, you are abundant. And the more you can begin to accept that and feel that and release yourself from those feelings of shame or guilt and the thinking that you can't have everything you want, that's the void. That's what sets you apart. So it's accepting that you are abundant because you're abundant because you're abundant and knowing you can have anything and everything you want and then aligning to that abundant version of yourself, which starts with what I just what I shared previously is showing up as that person. So how would you act? How would you feel? Who would you be in the situations, right? When you're, when you're having a hard conversation with your spouse, when you're having a hard conversation with your child who's whiny, who would you be? When you can show up in body and align with that version of you, that's when the magic happens. That's when boom, you collapse time and your manifestations happen. That's when you are the most, whatever you're calling in is your abundance. That's when it shows up for you. When you can be that person now without actually having the result yet. Does that make sense? And here's, let's, let's address this. If you believed there would always be enough for you, no matter what, And when you believe this, you're going to act differently in life, okay? When you believe that no matter what happens to you, you'll be okay because you're abundant, right? You're born abundant. It's your birthright. You would act differently. You would act with such confidence. You would act with such knowing that like, yeah, this is going to be fine. I'm great, right? And when you act like that, you take action in that belief, that is the state of alignment. So everyone always talks about, oh, you align with your desires, align with your manifestations, all of those things. That's what alignment is. It's believing, it's knowing in terms of abundance in this case, that you are abundant no matter what, and that no matter what you do in calling in this next level of abundance, of having anything and everything you want in every area or specific area you're focusing on, when you have that unshakable power of like, yeah, I know this because I know this because I'm abundant and you take action from that place, action, let's talk about this for a minute. So inspired action being like you get an intuitive hit or this like voice in my head that's like, hey, you should do this, 
right? I talked at the beginning about, I've gotten a couple of messages from people how I closed down my Facebook page that had like 60,000 followers on it and my Instagram page um, because I got a sacral hit. I got a little voice that was like, hey, you should close that account and start a new one. I'm like, okay. Because I know no matter what, I'm abundant. And I know no matter what choice decisions I make when I make it from an aligned place, when I make it from a place of knowing, I know that I'm going to be okay, right? I know because I know because I know I'm abundant. And I show up and I take action in that, right? So me taking action and closing those accounts is me aligning with the next level version of me, me aligning with the most abundant version of me. And that is alignment. Okay. So I want you to, I encourage you to think about alignment in that way. Okay. So showing up, how can you show up as you, as the highest version of you, the most abundant version of you, abundance, abundance of you, because you are so abundant. You were born abundant. You, you, you are limitless. You were created to be a limitless, right? Think of our children and how we obsess with them, right? And they are so perfect when they're little, when they're older, right? That's exactly how the universe sees you. So how can you see yourself like that? How can you see yourself when you walk past the mirror and say something nice to you? How can you see yourself at work and in whatever you do and like give yourself some kudos instead of talking crap to yourself all the time? In this, in seeing yourself as the perfect, abundant being that you are, things change for you. Things open up for you because you start seeing yourself in your power that the universe sees you in and you can attract more abundance in your life. Law of Attraction 101, right? All right, so let's talk about, because I'm sure you're listening to me and you're like, oh yeah, 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 okay, my abundance, whatever but I don't feel that way or that's not how I was raised or that's not how I was taught. So let's talk about that. So over years of societal programming and generations of you being taught to do things a certain way, that abundance wasn't available to you because it just wasn't because money doesn't grow on trees because, you know, your parents work three jobs because your parents filed for bankruptcy because you know, you immigrated to this country because whatever, 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 right? All of those things, because that's shame and guilt has been placed on you. And by taking, having more abundance means you're taking something from somebody else that there's not enough pie in the sky. So let's address that. Let's just see if we can poke holes in this belief, okay? That by you having more, by you being more abundant, that there's less for somebody else. This, you guys, is a framework that I teach, and that's gonna be something that I have coming up, but this is how I poke holes in beliefs that I have, in deep-rooted beliefs. So, and this used to be a belief of mine that the more I have, the less somebody else has, because there's not enough to go around. So, if we think about this logically, and truthfully, truthfully, this belief is not logical, this belief that like, just because I, if I have more than somebody else has, has less, but let's poke holes in it in a logical way. <clears throat> so as currently as I'm filming this, it's 2022 and there have never been more millionaires. There have never been more billionaires. There have never been more women millionaires, billionaires, more women making incredible amounts of money. There have never been more women or moms that are working from home. There have never been more women or moms that have had more flexibility in their careers. There have never, there has never been more technology than there is now at our fingertips. There has never been a time when help has been more at our fingertips than now. Like to get groceries delivered, to get a nanny, right? To um, order up food to be delivered at your doorstep. To, you guys, there's even an app to like, for someone to come and wash your car in your driveway. I mean, just phew, love, love, convenience, things like that. 
So with that, that there's never been all of those things that I just rattled off to you, would it make sense that even though there are more millionaires than there's ever been, there's more billionaires than there's ever been, how can that be if there's less pie? Because if you look at the numbers from a logical perspective, there's more millionaires, there's more billionaires. There isn't more poverty. So, but if there's less to go around, that's weird, right? Hmm. Okay. So let's think about more help. If I have the ability to get more help, does that mean if I get more help that somebody else will get less help? For example, if I get a babysitter, if I get somebody to do my groceries, mm, no, it doesn't mean that. In fact, by me choosing to get more help, I'm helping somebody else, right? That's a job for them. I get to pay them for that service. Hmm, okay. Interesting, okay. But what about huh, me making more money? There's only a limited source of money in the world. Is there? No, there's not. We print money every day, you guys. Money is an unlimited resource. For whatever reason, this blows my mind when I hear people say things like this. We, <laughs> as humans, so back in the day, right, there wasn't money. We like bartered, we traded things for like, I don't know, I'll give you this goat or I'll give you my goat for your, I don't know, your sheepskin. I'll give you two goats for three chickens and the sheepskin over there. That was our version of money, right? And then we got really smart and we created money as a way to pay for things. Instead of having to like trade things, we now exchange money, right? It's an exchange of energy. All money is, is paper, right? And we created money. So if we created it, not the universe, I mean, we created it in the universe's support, right? How would it be a limited resource? Hmm. Do you see now how in doing this, I'm making, I'm allowing you to think about all of the ways, all of the beliefs that you currently have that aren't serving you. The beliefs that are making you think, huh, okay, true, true. Let's, let's see it another way where there's not enough pie in the sky for everybody. Time. Something I hear a lot about from moms in particular that I coach, I just don't have time. I don't have time to put myself first. I just don't have time to do that. I don't have time to learn about this. Okay. And I hear you in some ways, but there are a lot of things that we could look at differently as it relates to time. So there didn't used to be a time, right? Like back in the day, there was no time. You would say, okay, meet me at the tree when the sun is hitting the third branch down for dinner, okay? And then we got smart, right? And we created time and we're like, okay, meet me at the tree at five o'clock for dinner. Sweet, right? We created time to be a convenience thing. That's exactly why we created money, is to be a convenience thing. Yet we're allowing ourselves to place limits on time. And that's not why we created it. We created it for convenience and ease. That's exactly why we created money, for convenience and ease. So that way when I wanna to go to the store and buy something, I don't have to bring my goat in tow. I get to bring paper or plastic, right? Credit card to buy for things. <clears throat> so what if we saw, in this case, abundance, right? Money and time as an unlimited resource instead of a limited resource. Whoa what would that change for you? Holy cow. How would you show up if you knew because you knew because you knew that you were abundant AF and that by you having more, it actually inspires other people to also have more, more abundance, more wealth, more health, all of the things. And by them seeing you have it, they're like, oh my gosh, if she can do it, I can do it. Oh my gosh, that's so incredible. I want to do that. I want to experience that. This whole idea of there's not enough, by me having more, there's not enough for somebody else is a fallacy. And the more you can 
poke holes in it as we just did a little bit, the more you can see and realize and feel like, oh, that's a BS belief. There's more than enough to go around. There's more than enough to go around for everybody in every way. So I want to invite you to really take a look at that and to really take a look at what your feelings, what your beliefs are around abundance. Today we're going to poke holes in a lot more beliefs. And I'm going to also invite you to calibrate up to my beliefs as it relates to abundance and other things. But this is where the freedom is when you can see the stories, I say the BS stories that you've told yourself for years that actually aren't true. You made them true in your mind. So let's talk about this for a minute. You made them true in your mind, but they're not necessarily true. And because they might be true for you doesn't mean they're true for me, right? These are beliefs. So in quantum physics, and this has been proven, you guys, this is real science. In quantum physics, if we both look at something under a microscope, or it doesn't have to be under a microscope, if we both look at something, we will see it differently, right? How many times have you, like, I don't know, been at the mall or somewhere and you look over and you're like, wow, was that just, was she just like wearing what? And then like you look away from it, you look back and you're like, oh no, she wasn't. I mean, I cannot even tell you how many times that I've been like, what? You see something different, right? If I look at something and I'm like, hey, look at that beautiful hot pink coat that that woman is wearing. And I tell my girlfriend and she's like, what? That's not hot pink. That's like a maroony. And I'm like, what? We see things differently. Works the same way under the microscope. You guys, we see things differently. That's how our brain works. No two people see things exactly the same, which is incredible, right? Incredible. So, and how many times too, this is the same way with hearing, right? If you're like listening to somebody, but not really listening to somebody, (laughs) <laughs> it just made me think of a conversation my husband and I had the other night where you think they're talking about, they're talking to somebody else and you think they're making a reference to, let's say you and something that will get you worked up that they're talking about that. And you go over and you're like, what, what are you talking about? La, 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 la. And you're like defensive, right? Cause you think they're talking about you in a bad way or something. And in fact, when they explain it to you, they're like, oh yeah, I was just saying that like, you did such a great job about that. Like how you handled that situation. Da, 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 da. And you're like, oh. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you. But what you heard because your brain, right? Distorted it. You heard something different than what actually happened. This happens all the time, all the time. And I'm sharing this with you because I want you to see things as always in your favor. I want you to see things as the universe is always conspiring in your favor because it is. So how can you see things as working out to your advantage? Because that's abundance. How can you see things and know going into certain situations, into all situations, that it's going to work out for you? That it's going, you're going to be abundant AF no matter what. Because this is your life and that's just how it works for you. You wouldn't expect anything less. You go into things expecting to win, expecting for them to be in your favor always. You don't go into things holding back saying like, I hope this works out, but I don't think it will. You see the difference in the energy? This is going to work. I'm giving it my all. I'm going to show fully in my power and in my energy versus, okay, I've tried this before. It's probably going to be okay, but I think it'll be all right. I mean, I don't know. I just hope that like, no, right? Show up fully in your power, fully in your abundance, knowing and feeling that you are abundant. That's where abundance lies from. I want to use this analogy with you guys. So I want you to think of abundance as an iceberg. Melanie and Lair used this as it related to um, money, but it holds true for abundance and how we're going to look at abundance today. I love Melanie and Lair. She's one of my coaches. I love her. So let's use this iceberg analogy. So the iceberg, think about it. You could only see what an iceberg looks like from the top or the sides, depending on where you're standing on it, standing at it or seeing it. 
but yet there's inevitably always something in the bottom, right? We know that, <laughs> Titanic. How can you choose to see abundance? This is the same way for abundance, right? You can only see what's up here on the top or the sides. And it's an illusion. An iceberg is an illusion, all right? And similar, so is abundance, okay? And I want you to understand it's an illusion. But I want you to be open to understanding things in a different way than how you can see them in terms of abundance. So I want you to see your abundance around you, whatever that looks like. And I would love for you, and this is part of your anchoring in your journal prompts, is where are you abundant right now? Where can you identify it? I'm healthy. I'm breathing. I'm happy. My children are happy. My children are in school. We have food in our fridge. All of these things, right? Where you're abundant. But I want you to see, oftentimes this comes up and I so get this because this is how we're programmed. If we can't physically see something, touch it, feel it, hold it, we think it doesn't exist. Winning is a great example of this. So is abundance in all of the ways, right? Health, like you can't necessarily see health, but I know I'm the healthiest I've ever been. I can feel it. Let's relate this to abundance. When you can accept that you are abundant because you are abundant because you are abundant. And I keep saying this, but I really want you to anchor it in. Regardless, without you seeing the results, right? When you know, right, that money shows up for you, that abundance shows up for you always and always, you act differently, right? This is alignment. And then you show up in that action and the universe is like, okay, we're going to collapse time and give her that manifestation that you're calling in. So let's get really specific here in this example. I'm calling in and I've, I've said this in 2022 is my year of my million dollar business. Okay. It is my year of writing a $50,000 check to Siren Eaton Shelter, a women's shelter in town. It is my year for making incredible transformations with moms and women who are ready to do it differently, who are ready to learn manifestation on their terms, to learn it from a mom, to help them manifest their dreams in an easy, effortless, graceful way, in their desire, in power, in luxury through manifestation. I've claimed it, said it, all of that. How can I trust and know and feel that I'm abundance in this? To know that this is happening, even if I can't see it right now, even if I don't know the how, even if I don't know the next five steps, I know because I'm so freaking abundant that it's happening. I know it's already happened in an alternate reality. It just hasn't shown up in this 3D physical world for me yet, but it will. So when you can show up in that place of your abundance, whatever you're calling in, and no, because you know, because you know, you are that abundant, you show up differently. Okay. So anchoring into that. So use the analogy, using the analogy of the iceberg where you can only see the tip and the sides, but knowing there's so much more underneath that you just haven't seen yet. This is so true all the time. Another thing that just came to me, like, is in pregnancy, right? Like how many times you know, typically you don't really get an ultrasound, like maybe the first, like when you're four or six weeks, I did. And then you have to wait for 20 weeks and you just know that like there's a baby inside you, but you're like, you can't see it. You can't feel it. You're just, but you trust and you know, right. That, that the baby, that your baby's going to be okay. You trust and you know that like when you're in labor, the baby's going to come out, right? This is the same way with abundance. It is the same way, you guys. And this is the same way with so many things. Oftentimes we just get caught up in the illusion because in the human mind, we think if we can't see, hear, touch, feel, see something, it's not there. And that's not true. That's an illusion. So how can we demystify the illusion of abundance? It starts with feeling abundant. Okay. So I want to invite you to do more things that make you feel abundant. So whether that's like a, taking a bath, it's a facial, it's a massage, it's getting your nails done, it's meditating in the morning, whatever it is to you that makes you feel abundant that you do right now, do more of that while also identifying more things you can do that make you feel abundant. 
Because law of attraction, the more you feel abundant, the more abundant you are, the more things you attract that are abundant, okay? This is it, you guys. It doesn't need to be overcomplicated. It's not this complicated, messy thing. I invite you to look at your life and see where you are so abundant, where you, where things have worked out for you better than you ever expected, where things maybe at the time when it happened, you were like, this is not, this is not good. I shared with you my story at the beginning, how like I was in a not good spot emotionally, physically at the heaviest weight I've ever been in health. My health was not there. My marriage was so much on the rocks, you guys. And I was so desperate so desperate to, but if none of that would have happened, if I wouldn't have lived that, I would never be sitting here where I am with living in my dream home, taking a vacation every month with my children, having the marriage I always wanted, but I didn't know how to get it. We had to go through that to get where we are. Having two healthy, incredible children, carrying my rainbow baby who's sitting in the next room and him and I being so connected. Having this incredible business where I get to serve women in this way, the business that I had before, I loved it so much, but there was something missing and this was it. This was it, the heart work, right? The mind work, the quantum work in it. If I never went through all of that, all of that heartbreak, all of that decision, all of that struggle, I could never be where I am now. So I want you, and that is, that was for me. That happened for me, not to me. At the time I was like, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Why, what is wrong with me? It happened for me. So now I can be living this life that I'm living right now. And when you can see <clears throat> where you came from, and things that at the time were so, and maybe you're in it right now, were so freaking hard. <clears throat> On the other side is the life you've always imagined, created, and dreamed of. And you can manifest it. You can live your most abundant freaking life. I'm so, so, so proof of it. So I encourage you to take a look at where you've been, where you are now. Identify those abundance. Identify that abundant all of that abundance in your life. Okay. I'm going to wrap this up and tell you one more thing. <clears throat> and I heard this story and it bears repeating again, Melanie and Lair shared that shared this as we think about our beliefs and our, what no longer serves us, what we were taught, from our parents, from generations, from our, from society about abundance and going for things and embracing it. All right. So the story is, and this is true. You can look it up. Fleas. Okay. Have the ability to jump, to jump two feet. All right. So there is a mother flea. Okay. And she has a baby and she is teaching her baby how to jump, okay? But she's never been able to jump two feet up on this table, out of this box. There was this study, and anyways, she's never been able to do it. In fact, so now she chooses, she knows she can't do it, right? And so when she's teaching her child to jump, she doesn't even get close to getting out of the box. And this other flea, that came from another mom is able to jump to uh, is able to jump outside of the box. So the mom, let's see if I can get the get explain the story right. The mom tries to tell her baby, "No, you won't be able to jump 2 feet. I can't. That is a rarity. Only a few people can do it." And so she discourages her child from actually trying to jump outside of the box, right? But here's the thing, and we do this, okay? As women and as moms, and this is how we're taught, we're taught to not go for it because our parents didn't do it because nobody in our family has done it because it's going to be really freaking hard because of all of these things, all of these stories we've put into our head that are a bunch of crap. Guess what happens is we give up before we even freaking try. Here's another example, a baby elephant in the circus. You know what they do to baby elephants in the circus? And this is, I don't love this, but 
they put a rope around their ankle. And as a baby elephant, and with a stake in the ground, as a baby elephant, they can't, they try and they try and they try to like get their, get the stake out of the ground to get their foot untied, right? But they can't do it, they're too little as a baby elephant. Okay, so they just, eventually after a while, they stop trying because in their brain, in their mind, they know they can't do it. Why would they use the energy? Why would they exert the energy? It's no use, it's no good. Guess what? When they become a full, full grown adult, they still hook them in the circus with something wrapped around their ankle and a stake in the ground. Now, when you're a two ton elephant and you're an adult, you can easily take that stake down. But because as a child, they tried and they tried and they tried and they couldn't do it. Their brain now thinks as an adult, as a two ton elephant, they're not able to get out of the stake. So they stay there. They stay there because it's comfortable, because they think they're limited, but they're not, they could break free. I share this analogy with you because this is so often how we are. We have these, this idea of abundance in our life that it's unavailable to us, that like no matter what we do, we'll never have it, that well, because our parents don't have it, we can't, or because society says it's selfish, it's shameful by us having more, being more abundant, it takes away from somebody else. Those are not, that is not true. It's time for us to stop putting these limits on ourselves. Stop putting these limits on ourselves that aren't true, that don't serve us. Even if we've tried in the past, we're different now. Doesn't mean we can't try again and expect a different outcome. Declare a different outcome claim a different outcome, be ready to receive a different outcome, manifest a different outcome. This is available to you, all of it, in your most abundant version of your life. For you, for your family, for the world.